今その中国とか日本とか韓国とかをめぐってある種の,この情報戦みたいなものが繰り広げられているところがあると思うんですけどもあのそういう日本のことをよく知ってる人たちが別に日本の味方になるっていうわけじゃなくて正しい情報を結構伝えてくれて軌道修正したりしてくれてるんですね。でこういうい人がその将来的にもしかするといなくなってしまうことがやっぱり日米関係にとって非常に難しい状況になるんじゃないのかなっていう感じがしていてでちょっとそのメディア自体が中国に幻惑されすぎてるんじゃないかっていうちょっと印象も持つんですけど。ベジンは、um, uh, the the um, so、世界の中で一番多くの国の国の国の国の国の国の Uh, we get, you know, we're, it's, it's, the, it's the growth industry for, for news, and、uh, we, get, we can still be paid to be journalists there. I think over the last year, as Abe has returned to power and as、uh, tensions have heated up, they've found a reason to care again. I think the, you know, the last、uh, five or six years of a lot of different prime ministers and a stagnating economy was a story that.、Uh, American newspapers didn't really want to cover.、Um, a, Japan's a very expensive place to report.、Uh, B, very few American reporters speak any Japanese.、Uh, I don't speak any Japanese. And it's not a language that many Americans are learning. So if we were to say Asia and include the Middle East, the percentage goes way, way down.、Um, Americans. American international news coverage、uh, focuses very, very heavily on the Middle East.、Um, that's what people want to read about.、Uh, they love stories about Israel, love stories about Egypt.、Um, you know, China, I'd say internationally, is probably a close second.、Uh, I don't want to rank where Japan is, but it's not third. I, I, I do get the sense from your question that there's a feeling that、uh, the world or the United States media has neglected Japan. And I wouldn't necessarily think of that as a bad thing because no news is good news.、Um, you know, Japan has a good relationship with the United States.、Um, China's relationship with the United States can be very strained.、Uh, Japan is a, a functioning democracy, China is not a functioning democracy. There are not tens of thousands of protests in Japan.、Uh, there is Clearly, a big economic situation that is a big, big story.、Uh, but no news is good news, and China is an excellent place to be a foreign correspondent because there is so much that's going wrong with it. So, there's、uh, one, of the, one of the most basic things that we've been hearing this week、um, is、uh, you know, words like dispute,、uh, nationalization. <laughs> Uh, dispute versus non dispute, or the, the lack of recognition of a dispute.、Um, we use the word dispute daily in our coverage of,、uh, you know, regularly in the coverage of、uh, the, dis the, the dispute over the、uh, Sakakus. Of course, here in, in Japan, in, in the Abe government, the, the whole issue、uh, hinges on whether there's a recognition of a dispute、uh, over the territory. Um, and, uh, and that, you know, that in itself is a sort of a, a very, you know, very sort of、um, not just a semantic、uh, detail, obviously.、Um, it's, it's at the core of the issue.、Um, and,、uh, you know, and nationalization versus purchase. We've even heard, we've heard a lot of Japanese um, um, commenters this, you know, this week,、um, not suppose politicians, but people, I think, who are sympathetic.、Um, Uh, with LDP here, also you know, use the word nation nationalization.、Um, and so, so, you know, so, so those kinds of things I think are often lost、um, in our coverage and,、um, or not highlighted、um, quite as they should be. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I just referred to、uh, this issue of how we've been blocked.、Uh, the New York Times has been you know,、uh, blocked、uh, within, within China unless you have a, a VPN to be able to scale the great firewall. This is. And, and this was a direct, directly, as an, you know, directly as a result of、um, the basically bombshell、um, investigation of the uh, assets, of, um, uh, assets and business dealings of、um, Wen Jiabao's. The former Prime Minister,、uh, Chinese Premier's、uh, family,、um, starting late, starting,、uh, late last October. And um, so uh, I think, in terms, of, you know, in terms of impacts on our coverage and,、uh, that's, uh, or you know, how we do business,、uh, 
um, it's it's pretty direct. On a more date on the ground level, um, you know the response the response has been very uh, mixed. Um, I would say um, a lot of people uh, within the sort of elite, you know, within the Chinese elite in um, you know in the big cities, um, you know, had had know know the general rumors um, about various leaders and their families and their business dealings and where their sons uh, sent sons and brothers. Um, work um, and what they're you know up to. Um, it's not a huge amount of people, but an important group of people. And uh, but on the other hand, there was uh, it came at a very uh, you know sensitive time toward the end of this uh, the, the eve of the Communist Party Congress, um, and so there were a lot of uh, conspiracy theories over um, whether this story was somehow a function of uh, inter. Uh, rivalries within the party um, specifically related to, in particular related to uh, that between Wen Jiabao who, and Bo Xilai. Uh, Wen Jiabao being a sort of an icon of liberals and Bo Xilai a sort of an icon of, of leftists and whether um, this was uh, some form of political payback or revenge. Um, so we spent a lot of time knocking down those conspiracy theories. <laughs> Well, I wanted to. I will address the China aspect to that question because, specifically on nuclear power, uh, that, that question is much more relevant to China than any other uh, country in the world at this point. Uh, China's uh, expansion plans for nuclear power uh, dwarf the rest of the world, um, much as everything they do does. <laughs> but uh, so they are uh, exp they're embarking on a, a major expansion. Uh, they've had corruption scandals in in the nuclear power industry. Uh, that's worrisome. Uh, it's, I think uh, it's an open question. I mean, I think the 311 has absolutely impacted the views of, of Chinese officials about approach, their approach to nuclear power, at least made them think twice about how they proceed. Uh, but the, they will proceed. Uh, and then the question is, uh, will they be able to ramp up expertise in all of the areas that they need to? Um, to, to manage this. It is, I think it is a, it's, it's, a, it's worrisome, very worrisome. I covered the Sichuan uh, natural disaster, uh, the earthquake in 2008, um, and it happened, you know, right a few months before the Olympics and 70,000 people died. Um, one thing is, you know, it is, like Gadi said, it's, it's troubling and it's almost as if the nuclear power growth is, is a disaster waiting to happen. And I've always looked at these major natural disasters in China um, in, a, in a very long historical perspective. Um, when a disaster like Sichuan happens, the thing that I think goes through some Chinese people's head is the historical um, mandate of heaven concept. Uh, that um, it's somehow nature is unhappy with the system and the government. Um, it's something that you study uh, when you look at Chinese history. Uh, they, they, they look at, um, you know, when, you, when, when Chinese study Chinese history and the end of a di dynasty is coming, you know, it's usually marked by some sort of natural disaster. So it could well, I don't know, be, be because of some incident or natural disaster thing that really goes up to a national level in terms of people's dissatisfaction, I guess. <laughs> Actually, of course, cyber warfare of, and Chinese cyber uh, warfare has been going on for years. Um, and I mean, I think the first intrusions that were really proven, or at least from the U.S. perspective, proven of, of, of uh, U.S. government facilities or, or Defense Department go back as far as 2005 or six. Um, and uh, but in the last couple of years, uh, the coverage has been extensive um, as as uh, New York Times uh, published a report um, where they kind of identified a specific military unit in, in Shanghai uh, as the likely source of a number of cyber attacks against American interests. Um, and we got an angry letter from, uh, uh, which we published uh, from, the, from the US, from the Chinese embassy in London uh, about my report. But they singled out, the one thing they complained about, I didn't complain about my characterizations of censorship or the way they manage their internet, a giant cage or whatever. They, they complained about 
uh, that I suggested that there was state-sponsored cyber attacks. Um, they are, they push back aggressively on this issue and they make it very difficult to address in a diplomatic way. I actually spent the past year on unpaid leave from Al Jazeera to be at Stanford to study digital security uh, for journalists, um, in part because uh, about three years ago, um, foreign correspondents based in China were starting to get suspicions that their emails had been hacked. And uh, you may well know about you know, Google and, and their uh, posting in 2011 or 2010, I can't remember, uh, where they pointed the finger at, essentially at China. So I was in Silicon Valley and, and definitely, you know, there are more um, startups there, uh, and also um, pretty large companies dealing with cybersecurity now in Silicon Valley in California. Uh, Google has three or four hundred uh, of the best security engineers in the world uh, trying to you know, um, keep their cloud system secure, and a lot of the concern is uh, towards China. Um, and, um, you know, but the other thing I, I think is worth pointing out, though, is that China's own systems are not um, secure, too. It's, it's a two-way street um, that I think we tend to forget. Um, if, the, if, if Chinese state-backed entities are successfully um, accessing the email servers of Fortune 500 companies in the United States. Um, equally, um, Chinese systems, from what I understand, uh, are, are quite vulnerable. I was going to say, uh, you know, state-sponsored uh, cyber attacks are, are nearly impossible to prove where they came from. And uh, Snowden was a gift from God for the Chinese and that he, he revealed, uh, you know, very clear examples of American bad behavior uh, which haven't been revealed on the Chinese side. So basically China was sort of facing, uh, although China has long claimed that it is, that it is the bigger victim, um, they've been of, of, of state-sponsored um, cyber warfare, that they uh, have basically been in a situation of, um, of, of publicity asymmetry um, by, the, by the very nature of their system. And, um, and that's where the Snowden sort of Snowden case was, uh, was, a, was a, a godsend, if you will. Yeah, I think I think it's very I think it's very tough. It's still early days um, to to judge the new leadership. Um, we have to look at the third plenum really and see what sort of um, at least what sort of things are laid out in principle and and see what what you know what starts to happen. Um, I don't necessarily think it's too early to say whether there's how much daylight there is between uh, the you know, the, between Xi Jinping and Li Keqiang. Um, and uh, I think we've seen Xi sort of have a generally supportive line on, on, um, on, ec you know, on economic statements um, and actually assert himself um, on, on the economic sphere on a more general level, um, which is, you know, generally the, uh, generally the, the, fee the, the purview of the, of the prime minister on a daily basis. I guess um, I hold a pretty dismal view of uh, future bilateral relationships between Japan and China. The two countries are definitely very strongly economically tied, and that is a huge incentive. But if we want to take a big long-term look at history, um, many nations have had close economic relationships and trade uh, relationships that eventually do run afoul of each other. Um, and um, maybe not necessarily in the next few decades, but I feel like these countries historically, they're neighbors, and um, they will you know, perpetually run uh, into each other's hair. So um, that is too bad. Now, in terms of public diplomacy, in, uh, the Chinese are not very good with their public diplomacy strategy. They have terrible soft power, in my opinion. And um, you know, certainly, we were talking about how easy it was to speak to people in Japan. And just being able to speak to government officials here and hear their point of view, even though um, we might not disagree with it or we feel like it's, you know, uh, Japan's version of, of the facts, uh, it, it, you know, goes a long way uh, for this country, though. The, uh, on patriotic education and, and also just in general public diplomacy, um, the, uh, uh, I would suggest that they've been mostly, it's been mostly unsuccessful in terms of painting Japan as, uh, as, as, uh, as, an, as the enemy uh, in, in Asia or, or in the world. Except, though, it has had a, 
an influence on Korea, it looks like to me. So I also have no idea uh, where is China heading or will it collapse, uh, but I would like to make the point that any sort of Chinese collapse uh, and probably a, any sort of political transformation would be bad for Japan and would be bad for the rest of the world. Uh, not only would the economic rupture, I mean, you'd imagine a collapsing China is not going to be growing at 8% a year, uh, but also, you know, as I said before, um, Chinese grassroots tend to be far more anti-Japanese than their leaders, um, so we could see a ratcheting up of tensions with that. Uh, also, if China were to face a serious domestic crisis, uh, the party's legitimacy rests on uh, its economic growth, its, um, its, its uh, the fact that it has governed China for a long time and uh, you know, people don't know anything else, and nationalism. Thank you.